Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick, And we got a couple of rooks we're looking at. Evan Neal and Dane Belton, the seventh overall pick and then the fourth round pick out of Iowa. But we're going to start with Evan Neal. Seventh overall pick out of Alabama, six foot seven, 337 pounds, 34 inch arms, was a three year starter for Bama at left guard, then right tackle, left tackle. But Justin, now he's moving back to right tackle for the New York Giants. He will play his career there uh, so long as Andrew Thomas is still in the New York Giants, so hopefully for a very long time. Justin, just Giants wise in general, like getting, now we have our tackles figured out. But I think we've seen a little bit with Evan Neal that. There may be some rookie struggles. I don't think it's going to be disaster level struggles, but I do think there's going to be some rookie struggles for him to figure it out as he gets along in the NFL. Yeah, Bobby, uh, excited to talk about Evan Neal and kind of even more excited to watch him play and to see what hopefully two functioning tackles look like in the NFL, even from day one with Evan Neal. Like I, I want, I do think Evan Neal, hot take, hot take, real hot take. I think Evan Neal is going to be an upgrade over Nate Solder. <laughs> but uh, the Giants from 2016 to 2021, through a span of six years, they averaged 24th in explosive play rate. That's really bad. It's really bad. You could say that, you know, hey, some of it's quarterback, you know, latter years of Eli. You know, you could say, hey, maybe a little bit of a, you know, bad injury luck. You could say, you know, wide receivers, blah, 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 not being healthy. Mainly, I kind of point it to the offensive line and having really bad tackle play and quarterbacks not having the necessary time to stand in the pocket on a down in, down out basis to really push the ball down the field. And now you, you saw how when Andrew Thomas took that step up last year, you saw how good it can be. Now that we have a left tackle and a right tackle, you know, hopefully we're talking about an above average offense that can produce big plays and push the ball down the field. And Evan Neal is a huge part of that. Let's talk about his play on the field um, and just kind of the prerequisites first. Like his athleticism is good, especially for the frame. Like he's not some he's not the athlete that Andrew Thomas is. He's not the athlete that Akema Kwanu was. But for his frame, it's really it's really good. His overall strength shows up all throughout his game. Whether again in the pass game where he's not being he's not being moved off his spot and the run game being able to move people uh, without having to lean or anything. The biggest issue, just like body wise, people have had it with him, and I and I have it too, is the balance. The balance isn't great, especially in the run. There's times where he gets off balance. We saw it a little bit in the preseason game. Feet getting first, too skinny. Yeah, in in, in the run game, uh, you know, with that frame again, we we haven't seen the second preseason game while we're recording this, so maybe you know, there's some things in there that we we learned from him. Uh, but I think he is for a rookie, a polished pass protector, Justin. I know there's been some things like he's been changing to some more aggressive and, and angle sets compared to the vertical sets uh, that he ran a lot at Alabama, uh, even though he did do those things at Alabama as well. But I do think he's polished with his his you know his his footwork, his punch. But he's just kind of got he's got to get used to that NFL speed where it's like you got to get to your spot and keep your feet moving through the rep. And then obviously, like, hey, you know, your punches have to be a little more aggressive because guess what? You guys have, you have guys that are faster, stronger, longer arms who are going to try and get into your chest. Yeah, and does he? And again, I think you're you're really nitpicking when you're talking about you know negatives to Evan Neal's game, but letting guys getting into your chest too quickly and too often is that a thing that Evan Neal a little bit struggled at Alabama? Well, and there's times where he would lunge at times with his punch too, which would leave him vulnerable to the like those inside counters. Um, so, like his punch, just he just needs better, uh, t- you know, better timing. But overall, like his punch timing is it was really beautiful at Alabama, and his hand placement, and his hand placement was great though. Like his hands always landed in the right spot. You know, with Andrew Thomas early on, they want to they want to get in the right spot. And then, as far as like footwork in the past game too, like his feet, like his he stays square with the line of scrimmage. Like he stays square. Um, you know, and, uh, and with, with like smooth feet in his past sets. Now, again, when you're at the NFL level, you got to have quicker feet and you got to keep your feet moving through the block and, and work dealing with counters and all, and all different types of things, but just keep it like what he's going to have to work on to start his career is like, Hey, get to your spot. But once you get to that spot, remember your feet don't stop there. Keep your feet moving through the block. Keep your hands readjusting through the block because you're not just going to be bigger, better, and stronger than everybody in the NFL. Six, seven and a half, 337 pounds. You don't really see it unless you see it, which at camp, we, we've seen it. 
I mean, he, he makes Andrew Thomas look like an average human being. And I think there is a value to that. There is a value to being a big human being, a large man, but he's also a plus plus athlete as well, which is super, well, yeah, super saying, fun. with that athleticism. That's why you know, it's like I say, like his athleticism, especially for his frame, because that frame yes. makes you hard to get around, makes it hard to go through you. Um, you know, so it's just it's just more like you have to be more polished as a pass rusher to go up against Evan Neal. Because guess what, you can't just be. You know, you can't take advantage of his size and bull rush, and you can't just beat him around the corner because he is, you know, has that frame and those long arms. Uh, uh, even though his, his arms aren't like his his arms, even with that height, are like a couple inches shorter than Andrew Thomas's at thirty four mm. inches. But okay, but still. Um, and then again, when, once he does have his hands on guy in the pass pro, like his hand grip and fight are are great. Again, I think he's got to get a little better at like hand fight replacing in the NFL level. But like it's his like once he had hands on guys in in college. It, the rep was over. Like once his hands were on you, that grip was on you. You, you just and and with the good uh, hand placement, you could not get off of Evan Neal in the college game. In an ideal world, because Bobby Johnson isn't going to let these guys do vertical sets, but in an ideal world for Evan Neal, do you think he would be more successful, whether it's long term projection or just year one rook, rookie year? Do you think he would be more successful doing these, you know, more natural conventional vertical sets or Bobby Johnson's, you know, 45 degree sets? I'm just going to go after these offensive linemen, get my hands on you, you know, pass, pro, uh, pass protection isn't passive. I do think he would be better in vertical sets at time, which they make you more vulnerable to inside moves and it and it, it kind of turns you into a one on one instead of working as a like what the Bobby Johnson school of thought is like, hey, we're going to be five guys working totally together at one where the vertical sets are more like, Hey, we got Andrew Thomas versus this guy, Evan Neal versus this guy, Shane and like it, it helps your guards out um, in a sense. And it helps your tackles not to get beat on inside moves, which is something that I think Evan Neal uh, like in the past game, that's the thing that he had to get better at because he would leave himself vulnerable to inside moves at times, but just like individually. Yes, I do think he would because he has that size frame. And then we've talked about moving his feet through the block. Well, you get vertical and a guy's trying to work the corner, like you don't need to move your feet as much through that block because guess what? You're there, you know. And if he tries to go around you, you're washing around the corner. If you've got the athleticism to get back and keep the correct proportion uh, to the pass rusher, yeah. All right, anything Run else game? in the pass game? Run game? No, no. And, and one of the other notes I had in the pass game is just uh, never going to be a victim to the bull rush. In the run game, I do think he needs a quicker get off in the run game. He does roll his hips through the block. But there's times where his feet stop on contact, where it's like, it's like, okay, I like the way, you know, with that height, your hips sink and roll through. But with that, we got to keep your feet moving through that block because that can lead to some stalemates. Um, but like with when we he resets the edge with his punch, like when he punches guys, he resets the edge, he picks that pop, he brings that pop, and he lands with uh, his hands with good placement and power. So even if his feet can stop at times, like he can move guys in the run game. You see it consistently. Um, but like we talked about before, he can lean and get top heavy and uh, will lose balance or at times be like shed inside, like, you know, shed inside on the block, whether depending on what he's trying to do. So again, the balance stuff shows up a little more in, in the run. The balance stuff shows up in the run game more than it does the pass game. You know, and you saw it the most uh, on the first preseason game, which was a, a play action pass where he's, you know, he's, he's out there trying to get out of the gate and he loses balance when he's trying to flip the hips in that play action, uh, that play action boot. So it, it just, it just shows up more in the run game because there's times where he's leaning and he can get top heavy. You know how we always make fun of viral clips of offensive linemen running down the field. And then people say that this player is a good player because he can run fast down the field or he makes like an insane block 10 plus yards down the field. I want an Evan Neal play this year that goes viral because he blocks somebody 10 plus yards down the field, whether it's on a screen or it's on a pitch. You know, we, we know that Brian Dable and, you know, Kafka in this offense, they're going to run like outside zone stuff, pitch stuff, and they're going to let these tackles either pull in the run game or they're going to let them be lead blockers out on screens with like Kadarius Tony, Darius Slate, and Wandell Robinson. I want a viral clip of Evan Neal demolishing somebody 10 plus yards down the field this year. I, I want think that. you'll get it. I mean, he's got the size and the ability to move to do that type of stuff. We even yeah. see all a little bit in that preseason game with the Darius Slate and catch. So he's got the he's got the the ability to move and then the size to where he could wreck a DB. So 
uh, we can definitely see that. Anything else on Evan Neal before we move on to Dane Bellin? No, uh, I'm I'm super excited for Evan Neal. Um, with you, where I hope he doesn't struggle too much. I don't think he will have Andrew Thomas struggles, but compared to the before the start of camp to now, I'm a little bit more open to okay. Evan Neal may not just come out here and be the best right tackle we've had basically since uh. You know, whether you want to say Pew or David Deal, right? You know, if you want to go back to those days, which it's crazy. What is that, like nine, eight years ago that we've had somewhat of a good quality tackle? Was Mike Remmers a good quality tackle in your brain? No. No. I would be better than Mike Remmers. Why don't you tell us about Bear Burger? You know, we'll talk about Dane Bellin. You know where Mike Remmers goes to, especially now that he's a free agent? He goes to Bear Burger. Montclair. Westfield, if he if he's still a Jersey guy sticking around Jersey, he's waiting a call from the he's waiting from a call from the Giants. Um, if he's in the city, you can go to a bunch of different locations in New York City, including Manhattan, um, Brooklyn. If you're downtown, they got something for everyone. They even got something for Mike Remmers and Evan Neal and Dane Belton, who we're going to talk about next. They're a burger joint, but they're not the type to be bogged down by the labels. Their menu is filled with options for everyone, regardless of dietary preferences. There's only one dietary restriction you'll be limited to. That is food that is made to taste great. Can confirm, been there, done that, and I want to go back. Bear Burger Kitchen and Bar, they have the best happy hour in New York City. 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. Ton of hours to be happy. You know the exotic burgers. Elk burgers, bison burgers, ostrich burgers. I got to try my ostrich burgers. I can give, I like the elk burger a little bit better than bison, but if you're in the mood for a little bit more of a sweeter taste, go bison. If you want more of a barbecue taste, go with the elk. Click the link in our description to find yourself at your favorite new happy hour spot, Burger Joint and Luncheon, Bear Burger Kitchen and Bar. Thanks for sponsoring these PPPs. All right, let's talk Dane Belton, safety out of Iowa. Was a fourth round pick, six foot one, two hundred five pounds. Last year for Iowa, had forty six tackles, three tackles for loss, and five interceptions. Even though he's not like the ball hawk type, like those, he didn't have any interceptions before that in his career. If you ask me for one word to describe Dane Belton, it's versatile. He lined up deep, he lined up as the nickel, and he lined up in the box. I think he's got fine speed when sprinting, but I do think he lacks some good change of, uh, you know, quick, quick, uh, short space, change of direction. Um, good strength to be not be overwhelmed in the box, but I do think he needs a little more aggression. And he does have good ball skills. Justin, I think he's dealing with the broken collarbone right uh, right now, so he'll be back sometime earlier, early in the season. But he is the third safety, and we saw it in practice. They were working him as that third safety. And what we was interesting is they were playing him as the deep guy out of the three. Oh, Bobby Skinner sneeze fest. This is what we sign up for. Dane Belton went to a Jesuit high school. I also went to a Jesuit high school and college. So Dane Belton and I, we have that connection. Just turned 21. So a part of the the theme of the Giants draft class is they are very, very young. Um, so I feel like he has some time to develop. I'm glad that he's going to be the number three safety this year. Xavier McKinney played, you know, uh, all of his games last year. Julian Love has been pretty dependable and durable throughout his career. So hopefully Dane Belton isn't going to be put in this spot where he has to suddenly be a starter. He can be in a role that the Giants are comfortable with him in. Five pass deflections in 2020, 12 pass deflections in 2021. He was second in the Big Ten in interceptions, six and a half tackles for loss this past year. So, you know, he certainly stuffed the stat sheet um, at Iowa this this past year, and he has been stuffing the stat sheet a little bit the last two years. Yeah, and it's just the thing with him is I I I wonder where his best spot is because I don't think like he played in the box a little bit, but he just didn't look aggressive um, as a tackler. But he didn't miss any tackles, but he just didn't like have that aggression that I look for in, in the box safeties. Um, and he played the majority at Iowa as in the nickel. The issue yes. is he struggled with the quick twitch guys. You know, like Wandale had his way with Dane Belton in that uh, bowl game. Now, where I think you could find his money there is facing your average tight end. Like, not Travis Kelsey, not Darren Waller, but your average tight end. I think that might be where his role is. But he also played – he didn't play deep much in college, but, like, he can play that that deep uh, field. Like I said, he's got good fi- – like, straight line, like, you know, sprinting speed. Um, not the greatest change of direction. So he's just got to be good at diagnosing and, and trying to get from sideline to sideline if he is playing that deep uh, that deep center field spot. Yeah, I think he takes good and safe risks when breaking to the ball in coverage. So, you know, there'll be some times where he allows separation, but I think he breaks to the ball well. 
I think that kind of, I could be reaching here, that kind of skill translates well to like a deep safety spot where constantly you are breaking in on the ball. You know, you are playing a certain spot in the middle of the field or down the field or, you know, you're splitting the field in half with another safety that's on the other side. And then you have to go in on break on the football like you saw like Xavier McKinney do a ton last year. Think back to those interceptions that he had against uh, Las Vegas last year, almost just at Oakland. I think he could sometimes be, he can play things too safe in zone coverage, which if you're talking about putting a guy deep, I like that. You know, you're the last guy of defense. Um, you know, you're the last guy that has to kind of keep track of allowing those big plays. So if sometimes you're a little too safe, maybe that's a good thing. And again, I could be reaching with that point. And I just think I know we have uh, saw him with the first team as that deep safety. I do think, like I said, I think his best role is going to be playing down towards the line of scrimmage, not in the box, but more of that, that star nickel position. Um, so because basically, I think, what McKinney has been doing this camp. And I, well, I just think like I like him versus tight ends. Like okay. you know, again, not not versus the elite tight ends. That's because, what like, every single play of your film breakdown. Like that. That's what that was. It, it, you had some in the box where where he made some nice tackles for loss, but basically every single play in coverage is when he was lined up as like this. He was lined up in the nickel, and that is not what he's been doing um, in camp so far. And that's what he's comfortable. At. Like he gets his hands. Uh, on guys at the stem of the routes to reroutes and he fights for good leverage. Like he's, he's just very physical through the route with his hands, uh, you know, in the hip of, of whatever guy he's, uh, uh, covering and, and man coverage. And, and then his zone coverage, like he has his eyes on the QB, uh, and, and he's like gotten really better at pattern, uh, pattern, you know, recognizing patterns. Um, and he has some good reps of baiting the QB and the stuff, you know, and if you throw a smoke screen at him, like he's aggressive to stamp those out. So, I just think that's where he's going to find his best role. And, and he's a fourth-round pick, so I'm not sitting here saying he's going to come in and just lock down tight ends. But I do think his best role in the NFL is playing you know, that, that split that split nickel versus the tight ends where you're not fully in the box, you're not fully playing nickel corner, but you're just kind of like you're in between and, and quote-unquote, that star position. And right. then again, you, you, he didn't play deep. Uh, I guess like one of the notes I had him on the draft is like deep safety, not his best role, but not much experience. Like they didn't play him deep at Iowa. Uh, rarely it was the box and nickel, but that deep safety spot, um, we know from watching good safety play with Xavier McKinney. And then we know from watching really bad safety play with Antoine Bethea in 2019, we know how valuable that spot can be and how detrimental it can be to your defense if you have a guy back there that's allowing big play after big play. So if Dane Belton can develop into this guy that stops the big play, and I think it's going to be very important for this Wink Martindale defense too, because if they're going to be playing single high, which we've seen a lot during camp, if they're going to be playing a lot of single high, you know, we know Wink Martindale's aggressive. He likes to blitz. He likes to put guy in the put guys in the box. He's not going to be doing this Patrick Graham stuff where he's going to be playing a ton of too high. And then, you know, you have your safeties that are sharing, you know, their half field responsibilities. Dane Belton's going to kind of be on an island a little bit. So he has to be that one that kind of limits those big explosive plays. It does make me feel better that Andrew Adams is on the team. It looks like he's going to make the team. It looks like he's on the team, so if Dane Belt never does start to struggle in any kind of specific role, Andrew Adams as like this pro's pro can kind of come in here and be whatever we need him to be. Yeah, and again, the deep stuff we're taking off of like three safety sets. So if you know if Julian Lover go down, you know I think they would put McKinney, you know, playing more deep and Belton down. Yeah. But again, what he is like fits what some NFL teams are looking for in like that big nickel role, because again, like he can cover some, you know, tight, like you know, kind of like what Taylor Rapp does for for the Rams, you know, where he's not the most athletic guy, needing to be smart, but also like in the run game, like uh. Like when he's given the green light, like he can shoot the gap and blitz well. Again, when given the green light, when he's just processing in the box, um, and again he's not aggressive, but he fits the wet, the run well. Um, I think he needs to come downhill a little more, but he always fits the run game well. Like where a guy like Yusuf Corker, who's like really fun, comes down aggressive. Like he he'll fit up his gap the very wrong or miss tackles. Dane Belton's not that type of guy, so I just think. What Dane Belton is is what a lot of teams are looking for in that big nickel role, and so that's. That with his skill set, watching him at Iowa paired with some NFL teams are looking for this. I just think that's where, if he becomes a guy who plays over half the snaps in his NFL career, which isn't a guarantee as a fourth round pick, I think that's where he fits in the NFL. Yeah, he was projected as a fifth and a sixth round pick, and I can kind of see why he was projected there because he's not 
Like, Yusuf Corker's like a fun player. And in a way, I think Yusuf Corker was projected to be a fifth, sixth round player, and he went undrafted. Um, Yusuf, um, Dane Belton was taken in the fourth round. You know, and, and I, I can see why, because he has this modern NFL de- NFL player, NFL secondary player safety skill set that you kind of want. Even though he isn't an exciting player, like I look at Dane Belton, he's like the most, here I'll use a phrase that the kids use, He is the most mid-draft pick that the Giants had outside of DJ Davidson, which I'm not too mad at the DJ Davidson one just because it's a late day three pick. But Dane Belton, an early fourth round pick, should hopefully be somewhat of a solid player um, and certainly was not a consensus fourth round pick well, as well. You know what I hope he can become? Like, here's my... my Julian like, Love. <laughs> yes, Julian Love. <laughs> seriously. Like, seriously, that's what I hope that he can become in his NFL career. That would be a success um, for his draft yeah. slot. So, um, anything else on Dane Belton for, before we roll? No, we did say, and Julian Love's PPP, that the Giants need more players like Julian Love on their team. Good teams have a lot of Julian Loves on their team. So, hey, Dane Belton, uh, be Julian Love. Smart, tough, dependable. All right, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you tomorrow with another player profile and projection. Until then, let's go Big Blue.